In the United States, our priorities are skewed. We are spending more money on our prisons than we do on educating our children. As Lawrence Sherman, Chairman of the Criminal Justice Department at the University of Maryland states, we rely more on prison than on early intervention. What does that say about our country? In a speech to the state of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger stated, today, almost 11% of the state general fund goes to prisons, and only 7.5% goes to higher education. Spending 45% spending more on prisons than universities is no way to proceed into the future. What does it say about any state that focuses more on prison uniforms than on caps and gowns? It sounds like we'd be better off turning our schools into prisons. Today I'd like to talk to you about where states are spending their money, why it matters, and how you can help. First, let's take a look at a prisoner versus a school child. Prisoners have access to television, basketball courts, weights, but more importantly, they get free health care, free meals, and free lodging. In the United States, according to the National Association of School Psychologists, we have 1.4 million homeless children. These children have no TV, no reliable food, and no exercise. Also, according to CBS News, there are 9.5 million, million children without health care in the United States. Let's take a look at just how many prisoners we have. This chart compares many different countries, and as you can see, um, the red dotted line shows the world average for number of prisoners, and the United States is well above that average. In 1980, we had about 500,000 prisoners. Today, we have 2.3 million. We make up 25% of the world's prison population, and we only count for about 5% of the actual population in the world. So what are all these prisoners costing us? According to the NAACP, who did a study entitled Misplaced Priorities, we spend $70 billion annually on prisons. $50 billion of this is coming from our state general funds. These general funds are used for health care, prisons, and education. This is important because schools rely on 70% of their funding to come from the state general fund. Nine out of every $10 is going to prisons. That other dollar is, splitting, is being split amongst everything else the general fund is used for. Between 1987 and 2007, funding for education went up 21% while funding for prisons went up 127%. Let's take a look at a chart to put this into perspective. This chart shows the um, change in expenditures between 1980 and 2006. As you can see, we've been spending a lot more on health and prisons and a lot less on higher education and elementary education. Now, why does this even matter? Well, reduced funding equals fewer schools. And we all know that there are many problems with our school system today. Schooling is critical to reduce the number of people in our prisons. Also, it's been shown that higher education benefits the community. There's increased earning, lower unemployment, less use of public assistance, and more people vote. So what's going on in Kentucky? Kentucky is one of those states that is spending more money on prisons than on education. In 2009, the Interim Joint Committee on Judiciary met to discuss this issue. They talked about how the budget has grown 10%, corrections has gone up 44%, health care is up 146%, and education is at 36%, which is down from the 46% that it was. Also in Kentucky, we are spending $80 a day on a prisoner, while we only spend $36 a day on our students. So what can be done? In Kentucky, we can help support effective defense litigation so innocent people don't get sent to prison. We can support effective alternative sentencing for people who have lesser crimes or nonviolent crimes. Also, we can support the Innocence Project, Innocence Project which helps prisoners who are in prison but are innocent, and it helps them for free. 
States can also study the problem more in depth, and we can support efforts to reform drug policy and sentencing. Some states have already, have already started doing this. In New York, they saw a 20% reduction in 10 years. What they did was close three minimum security prisons, and they saved $26.3 million. In Michigan, they closed three prisons and five prison camps, saving a total of $118 million in just three years. So what can you do? You can make sure you vote for your state treasurer. It's important to have a say in where your money's going. Also, you can sign the NAACP's petition. It's very easy. You go online and you fill it out and you click submit and you're done. It's important for us all to stay informed on this topic. We need to vote, we need to write letters to congressmen, and we need to sign petitions. We rely more on prison than we do on early intervention. We need to change that and rely more on early intervention and less on prisons. That starts with spending more money on education so we can enrich the lives of our youth and keep them out of prisons. Take a stand and help make the United States a better place. Thank you.